on that previous slide, we could only make one possible alkene from those given alcohols. In the case of these two alcohols, though, there's two possible products, depending on where we choose to form that double bond. So, in principle, you want to be able to show for any alcohol all of the possible alkenes that you can form when you dehydrate it. But it's also important sometimes to be able to pick out if one particular product should predominate. And although we can't predict these exact percentages, we can use this rule at the top of the slide to predict which of the products should outweigh the other. This is called the Zaitsev rule. It was formulated in the 1800s, so it's been around a while. And it was noticed that during the dehydration of any alcohol, when you get mixtures, you tend to get more of the alkene that is more highly substituted. Remember, those are the ones that are going to be more stable, and so they, they form in greater amounts. And so for this first alcohol here, if I take the OH along with one of the hydrogens from this methyl group on the left side, that gives me this first product. But I can also imagine taking one of these CH2 hydrogens that leads to the other product. So these two are isomers of each other. They certainly have a lot in common, but one way in which they are different is that 2-methyl-2-butene is more stable. If I look around this carbon-carbon double bond, I see there's one, two methyl groups on this side, and then there's also a methyl group on the other end that's attached to that carbon. So we say this one is tri-substituted compared to plain old ethene, with nothing but four hydrogens on the other end of those bonds. Uh, this is, again, tri-substituted. The 2-methyl-1-butene here, we don't get much of that because it is less stable. And it is less stable because it is only di-substituted. We have two alkyl groups on this end, but these two hydrogens um, make it be considered as unsubstituted on that end. To put it another way, we get predominantly the product with the double bond in the middle of that chain of carbons as opposed to the product where it's on the end. Um, down below, this is a reaction we're going to do ourselves in lab, and so we'll see what percentages we get. But if I have this methyl group adjacent to this OH group, then I can imagine we either end up making a product with the double bond next to that methyl group, or since there are available hydrogens at the bottom of this ring, I can also get uh, this second product. And so they are drawn just to show the difference in location of that double bond. And so just like the example above, we've got a tri-substituted alkene, which is this first product, as opposed to a di-substituted alkene. So whether it's chains or rings, we really just pay attention to, again, where that double bond is and, and how many alkyl groups are directly attached to where that double bond is. And so it helps us get an idea of which products are likely to uh, predominate in reactions like these. Well, we find that there's two mechanisms for forming alkenes, just like we have two for the substitutions. Now we use an E for elimination as opposed to S for substitution. But this looks much like the SN1 reaction we saw in the previous chapter. In fact, the first couple of steps are identical. We talked about tertiary butyl alcohol reacting with HCl, and in that case, the chlorine replaced the OH. But with a change of acid to sulfuric, we no longer get substitution. We do, however, form ourselves a carbocation, first by transferring a hydrogen from the acid to the alcohol. And they don't show the sulfuric acid here, but this hydronium ion would form if you have sulfuric acid present. And once we transfer that hydrogen, then in step two, we lose a molecule of water because water is a great leaving group, and that leaves us behind a tertiary carbocation. So just like SN1 was a good explanation for tertiary and secondary alcohols undergoing substitution, the same rule is applied for when they undergo elimination. E1 is the, is the mechanism for, for alcohols that are secondary or tertiary.